Have you ever looked at photos in magazines and they just didn't look the same as those coming from your own camera? Sure, those magazine photos are taken by the pros with superior camera skills. But the pros have a secret that make their photos so much better. And today, I'll reveal that secret to you. My name is Mark Hemmings and I'm an internationally recognized photographer and photography instructor. In this short video, I'm going to share nine powerful photo editing techniques for turning average photos into stunning magazine quality images. And all of these edits will take you three minutes or less. I know these nine techniques work really, really well because they are the same techniques I use for editing all of my professional photography assignments across the world. And this is the secret of all professional photographers. They never publish their photos without post-processing. Actually, that's one of the main reasons why their photos are so stunning and why they're so popular on Facebook and Instagram. But if you look at their photos before editing, they often look very different. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Here's just one example. On a recent photo trip to Kyoto, I came across these women dressed in such lovely kimono. I quickly grabbed the shot, not having enough time to change any camera settings. While the photo was okay, with careful cropping, white balance, contrast, vibrance, and tonal adjustments, I was able to make this photo so much more dramatic and mysterious. It took me less than three minutes to edit this photo, but what a difference it made. So if you want to achieve the same magazine quality results that pros get with editing their photos, all you have to do is watch this video on nine most powerful editing techniques. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the first technique I wanna share with you is how to crop and straighten your photos to dramatically improve their composition. Before you think, well, this is overly simplistic, let me tell you two things. First, we will get into more advanced editing techniques further in the video. And second, cropping and straightening are so crucial to all editing that they absolutely have to be covered first. Okay, take a look at this sample photo that I have here that I took in Mexico. It's okay, but there are some serious problems with it. First of all, at the top left, we have a, a sort of an, a splash of light that really doesn't add to the story. I'd like to crop that out. Also, the people at the bottom. While I really like this uh, well-dressed gentleman, the two other women really don't add to the story because all of the attention should be on this man who is in the ray of light. Not only that, at the far right, I included by mistake sort of uh, half of a person, uh, their right shoulder, and I want to crop that out because that person doesn't really add to the story at all. The power of cropping is really, really great. By cropping, you can actually get rid of extraneous elements, which is a technical term, meaning parts of a picture that doesn't tell the story. Okay, take a look at my after picture. As you can see, we now have stripped the image down to its bare essentials. We have the man in the light, and we have the gentleman that's well-dressed. Now, he is much darker. That's okay, because he isn't the primary subject. However, I feel I have a much stronger picture now that I've cropped and only retain the most important elements. Now I did all of this in Lightroom in less than three minutes. And actually I use Lightroom for all of my editing because I believe it's the only software that helps save you time and give you amazing results all at the same time. Now you'll notice that I reduced the light a little bit in this picture to really help bring out this person. But we'll get into that later in this video. Here's another example for cropping and straightening. A nice shot of this sailboat out on the ocean. But there is a big problem. The problem is the horizon is not straight. This is really critical and it's actually a common problem that even pros face because it's really hard to actually get a straight horizon when you have water photos, architectural photos, or any other photo. However, with this corrected photo, plus a little bit of enhancement of the setting sun, we get a really strong end result. I really like this photo. Okay, in this technique, I want to explain how altering shadow areas and highlights can radically add drama to your pictures. To demonstrate this technique, I've opened this photo that I took in Kyoto, Japan, in Lightroom. While it looks okay, there's a big problem. 
As you can see, the shadow areas are really pixelated. There's so much what we call digital noise, it really doesn't look good. And with two adjustments of two sliders in Lightroom, we can really fix those shadow problems by creating a silhouette. Now there's no more ugly grain and the picture is drama filled. Okay, we get a really cool shot of a bridge here. I really like it, but the problem is along the top part of the bridge, it's way too bright. Now the rest of the picture looks fine, but we have to correct the highlights. Now highlights simply means really bright areas. And we can easily do this with this corrected photo. All I did was move one slider. The rest of the picture remained the same, but the highlighted areas, the overly bright areas, are now down to a proper exposure. And the entire picture looks excellent. Now the next technique I want to share with you is removing all unwanted objects in your photo in order to really push all attention to the main subject. So for example, each year I do photography workshops in Japan and my clients absolutely love to visit the snow monkeys and they take amazing photographs of these incredible creatures. The only problem is often what's behind the snow monkeys causes a lot of problems. Take a look at this picture here. While the shot is okay, there are twigs and branches coming out of the monkey's head. Now to have a really strong image, we want to get rid of all of the extra parts of the picture behind the monkey that have no relevance. In fact, twigs coming out of the monkey's head just doesn't look good. So we erase them. Take a look at this final picture. This is far more cleaner. Plus, with the addition of a bit of color balance and brightness, this photo is stunning. Now many people feel really overwhelmed when they open up Lightroom. They have so many photos that they need to correct. But I want to give you a quick demo just to show you how powerful and how simple using this program is when you know what you're doing. Okay, so I have this cupola, this great ceiling shot, but in the middle is an electrical outlet that I want to get rid of just to make this a bit cleaner. Very simply, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, healing brush work and we'll see what happens. Now the center is completely clean exactly the way I wanted it to be. And it only took me a minute to do. It's nice and clean, very dramatic, and it's great for sharing with social media. Now the next technique I want to share with you is how to bring out the blue in the sky to significantly liven up your photos. Now take a look at this sample shot that I have here. While it's okay as it is, I really feel that adding blue to the sky and making it really punchy is gonna make this shot even better. And by selectively only adjusting blue in this picture, all of the rest of the picture remains the same. The clouds still stay white, and of course, the flowers in the field stay the same color. Overall, we now have really great blues in the sky. And by additional adjustments, this picture becomes super punchy and I'm really proud of it. Have you ever taken a photo of a building and while the building was exposed really nicely, the sky is just a bland blah white? Well, it can easily be corrected by adding blue sky to almost any photo. Take a look at this after shot. I was able to add a realistic looking blue sky all within two minutes. And now the photo is ready to roll. It's good enough to be framed and I'm proud to send it out to social media. Okay, the next technique I'd like to share with you is fixing unnatural looking lights for magazine quality night photos. Now take a look at this sample shot that I took in Mexico. Do you see how the entire picture is covered with an ugly green color? This is very common because a lot of city lights are created with either mercury or sodium vapor. And that's just a technical name for the light, but what that does is it produces a really strange picture on anything that's under the light. So take a look at this after picture. I corrected the color really quickly. In fact, it only took less than a minute. And now I have a more realistic looking picture. The people look good. The facades of the old classic buildings look much better. Really happy with this shot now. Now I absolutely love night photography. 
But the problem is, whenever we want to illuminate objects on the ground, like trees, well, we usually use our car headlights or other forms of illumination. But these types of lights usually create a strange color to whatever we're illuminating. So by changing the white balance slider, I'm able to get a more accurate look to whatever I'm photographing. And the stars in the background still remain excellently exposed and color balanced. Okay, in this next technique, I like to show you how adjusting only one color of your picture can create dramatic black and white photos. Let me give you an example. I have this uh, really great European street scene up here. It's very colorful, has a deep blue sky. And if I change this to black and white, just the normal default black and white, the picture's okay, but it doesn't really have the drama I'm looking for. Now, can you see how rich the blue sky is? If I manipulate only the blue area of the picture, I can adjust the brightness or darkness of the sky to make this very drama filled. For example, I'm gonna only adjust in this black and white, the blue area, so the sky almost becomes black. Now, I really love the drama of this black and white photo. Now, this next example is pretty similar to the one before, where we have a, a sort of a decent color shot, but in black and white, we can adjust only one area to make it very dramatic. For example, I really want a nice, shiny, bright water, but I want the cloudy sky and the shed to remain untouched. Well, we can do this by only adjusting the water. And we end up with a high contrast, really dramatic black and white. And often for black and whites, what we're going for is a contrasty, punchy image where we have high highlights, that means very bright areas, and we have dark shadow areas. This looks absolutely great. This next technique is all about using selective color adjustments for vibrant landscape photos. Take a look at this sample shot that I have. It's a really beautiful European cityscape. Now a lot of the times you'll be doing landscapes similar to this. Cityscapes with green trees and blue water, blue sky. However, you don't always want to just increase saturation, which is color brightness, altogether. That can actually look terrible. However, if we want to only make the trees greener and only want the blue sky and the blue clouds to be bluer, we can easily do this. Take a look at the results. The blues are great and the greens are great just by selectively choosing only to adjust one certain color at a time. Okay, now let's go to this picture, this winter scene. Now, I really like the center of this picture, this old classic building. However, because the rest of the picture is blue, I would like to make this building pop out. Now, by selecting only the color of this building, I can actually get results like this. The remainder of the picture, the bluish area, still remains the same. However, the building comes alive and it becomes far more vibrant and reddish. It's exactly what I wanted. I have a really cool technique for you now. You can take average looking portraits and give them sort of a movie poster look. Take a look at these examples. Don't you think they look really striking? This effect always stuns people when the image is shared on social media and they want to know how I did it. Actually, my secret is quite simple and I'll share it with you now. Okay, so we have this uh, really nice normal portrait here. It's kind of uh, what would come out of your camera. Uh, but what we're gonna do is give it sort of that DVD cover movie poster look that's quite popular. So I'm gonna make some adjustments. And with the simple and very quick slider adjustments, I can actually transform this picture from a standard and good looking shot to a graphic shot that really looks good. You'll notice there's less color and there's more of a contrasty look that is really great for social media. In this next technique, I want to show you how to get really stunning landscapes by removing what we call haze. Now, haze is a result of ultraviolet light. It's called UV haze, and it can really reduce the impact of your landscape photos. Okay, let's take a look at this test shot. It's really cool. It's got dramatic clouds, it's on the water, has an old classic building with a beautiful rainbow, but it still doesn't have the drama that I'm looking for. In order to get the drama I want, 
I'm going to reduce the ultraviolet haze, or UV haze. So by one quick movement of the slider that actually only takes about five seconds, the photo goes from this all the way to this. Now this is drama. I absolutely love the results of removing UV haze. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Now this is a standard landscape, there's nothing special about it, but can you see there's a slight bluishness? Now UV haze often results in a slight bluish softness that really doesn't look good. But when we remove the bluish haze, we can return the colors back to the normal levels. For example, now with this corrected image, the greens are greens, the yellows are yellows, and we were able to remove the blue altogether. Now an example with my favorite subject, the Japanese snow monkeys, because they were in hot springs where they bathe, there was so much hazy mist in the air, and that's a result of cold air up in the mountains and, of course, really hot water. Often it's really hard to get a shot of the Japanese snow monkeys because of all of the haze. But with a simple movement of a slider, I'm able to absolutely correct this image, bring out the colors of the snow monkeys' faces, and we have a good, crisp, clear, award-winning shot. Don't forget that colors really pop out when you remove the UV haze. As you see, the techniques I shared with you are extremely powerful. And once you start using them, they'll dramatically improve your photos, like it does for the pros who use them. And while I showed you all of the techniques, and you know it's best to use Lightroom for them, you probably wouldn't know how to get the same results for your photos in Lightroom by yourself. And that's totally okay. It actually took me about six months of research and hard work to master Lightroom. And I'm a technical guy, and I had help from my professional photography friends. So if you have a lot of time, and you're really good with technology, you can probably figure out Lightroom by yourself. But I wanted to create an easier solution for people who wanted to improve their photos right now. And that's why I created Lightroom Editing Mastery, which is the only online course that shows you how to turn average photos into stunning magazine quality images in three minutes or less. This course covers all the editing techniques we talked about today. So when you sign up today, you'll know how to create all of the edits you saw in this video. Now I have to warn you that Lightroom Editing Mastery always sells out quickly and registration will only stay open for a few more days. So if you want to find out more about the course, you should do it right now while the registration is still open.